The scripture reading for tonight it comes from Acts 8, Acts 8, verses 12 through 14. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about God's kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip, and seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John. We are excited to have Brother Elias Roque with us uh, this evening, along with his wife Christy and their kids, Eli, Noah, Isaac, and Abel, ages one to seven. Uh, I know they have had quite a whirlwind since the end of uh, last year when they started, when we first heard about this uh, potential work of uh, Hispanic Church of Christ in the St. Louis area. And when you kind of look at the, the uh, whole situation, um, it's kind of an ideal situation where Elias has worked in this uh, specific mission uh, for, for quite a few years uh, doing this type of work. Uh, they have come from the Great Oaks uh, Church of Christ near Memphis, where they have been for five years and have built up the uh, uh, Hispanic Church of Christ in that area. Uh, up to 80 members. And so we're excited and ask you that you give your attention as Elias brings us a sermon and some information about uh, this opportunity that we will be supporting and that will be beginning in uh, June. Good evening. Hola. Como estan? Oh, good. I feel more at home now. Thank you so much. I know you have, some of you has already uh, a Spanish class in the school, high school, I appreciate it that. If you say hola, that means a lot for me. I feel at home already. Uh, I wanna say, um, in behalf of my family, my wife and my kids, I really appreciate it a lot, how great heart and uh, what amazing leadership you have. And uh, I appreciate a lot that you have faith and all of you for the support that you're gonna be helping for reaching our souls. And that's the main thing that we all, we want to in this world. We want everybody to have a space and a place to worship. How amazing it just to, for me coming to, we just came from another congregation, now we're here. And it's, it is amazing how we can find places to worship. And that remind me, in the time of Jesus, there was a lady that she was willing to worship God. And she was so passionate for that she was trying to worship God in Jerusalem. She was trying to have the same God that Jewish has. But there's something there that she won't be able to do it. It was hard for her because she was seeking God. She was trying to do exactly what Jews were doing. But it's in the time of Jesus, Jesus appeared to her and she said this to her. If you please willing with me to open your Bibles in the book of John, the book of John chapter four. And we know already that this lady was a Samaritan. And uh, this lady came to pick some water at a certain time, and, uh, and apparently Jesus was there. And there's a phrase that I would love that you can keep in your mind, because this expression, I believe that it was a relief her soul. Because when he says this to her, I believe that that was the answer she was hoping for many years. Jesus says to her, 
in chapter uh, John 4, chapter, 20, uh, chapter 4, verse 21, says, Jesus says to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you would either, neither on this mountain in Jerusalem, worship the Father. Jesus says, believe me, either neither Jerusalem or here, we're going to be worshiping God. How powerful was that for, for her? Because by the time, Samarians and Jews, they never socialize each other. So Jews were so proud to have their own temple and so proud to have their own God and worshiping God. But this lady was so passionate and she was trying to seek God. According to the story, um, 445 uh, before Jesus, it was a time when Jerusalem came from slavery and they were trying to rebuild the temple. And Samaritans came to the Jewish in that time to the leaders and says, we want to be part of you. We want the same God you have, and we want to be part of you building this temple. But the leader says to them in a few words, I believe that if we build together these, we don't have the same mind set about it. I believe that we, you and us, we don't have nothing to do right now about God. Samaritans were Jews before. 722 before Jesus, you know, Syria came to conquer that area north of Jerusalem, and that's why we, they became Samaritans. So if you see in the timeline, 722 and then 445 before Jesus, before Jesus' time, they were trying to convince Jewish to, to get together to worship the same God. Society, you know, society was on a break. There was a, something that they don't worship together. So in the time of Jesus, Jesus passed to Samaria and stayed there, and this woman, that I believe she was there for, not for casualty, she was there for purpose. She was there talking with Jesus, and Jesus says, believe me, it's going to be a time that is not in Jerusalem, neither this area. True worshipers are coming. And he says in the verse 23, he says, but the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and the truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. If you notice the phrase, he, she says to the woman, says already, says, um, it, the hour is coming, it's soon. It's, it's, so, it's so close that you're going to be worshiping God. And the best is, you're going to be worshiping God, the truth, and the Holy Spirit. How relief was this expression to this lady? That's why I love Jesus a lot. Our leader Jesus says, I know between Jew Jewish and Jerusalem and Samarians, they don't consider each other. And that's why I love Jesus, because Jesus breaks cycles of society. He always wants family. He always wants people, no matter what language, no matter what area, they want us together. And that's why he came to the earth, to die for all, for have a place to worship, to have a place to seek him and worship him in spirit and truth. And that's amazing. And when I see this, um, San Luis Hispanic Iglesia de Cristo, that means Church of Christ, <laughs> which means um, how is this is going to be incorporated? Well, our mission is to plant the first Hispanic-speaking Church of Christ in the entire, in the entire, in the entire 
uh, San Luis metropolitan area, which means we're gonna seek, save the lost. Spanish, pe uh, Spanish speaking people. Reach out the Hispanic community. All Sounds Church of Christ is gonna be helping in this. And this is amazing how we're gonna be in contact with people to have a, a, a little place in the lobby that we can bring tracks and information that people that want to be in touch and reaching out people, they just grab some from their own congregational buildings. And you never know. Probably some people is going to fix your yard or fix your fence or you, it's going to be your roof. You know, and then you're going to see them and say, oh, I have a track there already in my car, so I'm going to give it to the, hey, Iglesia de Cristo. Direction, that's all. And they are gonna do the rest. If you call me and say, I have a friend that he would love to know about God, he would love to know about the Church of Christ, I will do the rest. Just point it to us or point me to them and I will do the rest. This is the way it's gonna be working uh, around the churches. So, goals, why we want this ministry? Um, you know, my wife, Christy, probably, you know, many people saying, I know her, anything, and that's amazing. And, and uh, we have been coming to St. Louis uh, for nine years already for holidays. And this past November, I told her, I said, do you notice that there is, everywhere we go, there is more Spanish-speaking people? And she said, yeah, I noticed that. So we went back to Memphis, we asked the elders with permission, formal permission with them, if we can come here in December and ask, ask our congregations if they have the same sensation of idea or plan to do it. And guess what? Every congregation that we knock door, they open and they say, yes, yes. That's amazing. And all the churches, they want to be part of this. And I'm so excited, guys, how many things I heard from this congregation, they're so excited, was and so excited, everybody. And the best point of this is we all together for a reason. We all together as a family to reach out souls because the priority is saving souls in this world. So. Uh, sorry, I'm going go back. He told me to go back. I don't know how now. <laughs> the red one. Okay, good. So 75,000 Hispanics, according to the census in 2015, 75,000 Hispanics. And there is no any Iglesia de Cristo in the whole metropolitan area in San Luis. I say many cities. They have 50,000, 30,000, they have three churches, seven churches. But San Luis doesn't have any, and it will have one now. June 10 is going to be the first worship, which means I'm going to start with my first member is Christy, my wife. <laughs> She's going to listen to me. She's gonna, I'm going to lead songs. My kids going to be helping me too, but this is what we love. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna invest 10 years in our life or more to reach out and make this, God, this plan of God. And um, uh, before the June 10th, is Lord willing, we're going to be outside with my wife all the week, morning and evening and possible night, just invite people because we're going to start the new Hispanic uh, Church of Christ in Missouri. So, uh, they, these souls, they don't have place to worship in truth and in spirit. There's a lot of people that are reading the Bible. But what we're going to do, well, as a family, we all family, and uh, we're going to plant together the seed in unity, fellowship, participating, welcoming, and bring them to Christ. Um, the church is going to be located in West End. It's going to be West End Iglesia de Cristo. And um, 
is a good central area, which means we're going to over our um, over focus is to be in St. Charles County. There's a tons of people there. 75,000 Hispanics, there, there are a lot more in St. Charles County. So we're going we're gonna to be uh, starting in 20 miles radio around West End, and then 40, and then 60, and then as we can, as the time let us, you know. We're going to be doing that. So our plan is how we're going to be incorporated. Well, I will, I will be part of the staff of West End. So I will be the West End uh, Hispanic minister. And um, I will have my office so I can have, receive calls. If you have a call, something about I have a person here, I have his number, anything, I will be there. So I will conduct the service too. And uh, we're going to ask, and, and as the elders, West End says, they offer the fellowship halls. Why I request this? Because I, I would love in Red Oaks how we incorporate a unity fellowship together. If you visit Great Oaks, you will see the people before service. There's Spanish people, speaking Spanish people, and, and English uh, people talking each other. I don't know how, but there is one language that we all understand, that's love. <laughs> And you will see many people hugging, talking as they can. It is amazing how this is worked through. So I think that's why um, the leadership and also this fellowship and all the things make greater success. So um, we will combine service together. We will combine efforts with love, support, fellowship, families in Christ. So um, how it's going to look like? Well, we're going to, um, as we grow, as we convert families, we're going to have the bulletin in Spanish. We're going to have family days, friends days, the same day with the, with the English speaking. And we're going to have fellowship together. We're going to bring all meal together. We're going to sit together in fellowship hall. We're going to eat together in, in the camp, in the laps of leaders, anything. In, in fellowship meals, we're going to have combined service three times a year which means for those who, who has been in mission trip, this will be exciting, ex so excited, because it's gonna be the same way. It's gonna be translated, and one person is leading praying English, so the another one is translating after he's finished, you know, everything, and then one song in Spanish, the same song when he's finished, the next song is in Spanish the same way. This is exciting for many people. So in Gredos, we have people visiting us because they love that combined service. It's only two or three times a year. So it's, it's all depends how many people we have by the time. So uh, evangelism. We're going to move quickly as soon as we can. Passing off flyers, as, as I mentioned, congregation. We're going to have a small section in local bulletin pre, uh, like St. Peter Church of Christ. The elders there already, they have a space, and they said, please pray for Christy, pray for the, they keep updating the members, and that's one thing I would love to, if I can give permission to have a little space in your bulletin, if we can, to have a updated about, it, because I would love that everybody help us in many ways as we could, praying or, or you know, and uh, encourage us to. So we're gonna pass up flyers, the first baptism is going to be um, the first families that we can evangelism and their friends. Because one family can have 10 friends, and those 10 friends can have more friends. So, so that's the way, and USA is the way the church grows. <laughs> so um, immediately needs, we need prayers, please. When you have time and you have a minute in your life, please pray for us. This is, this is something that is a new chapter for us. We came from a place that everybody knows what I'm doing, but it's, it's new for us now. New in the way that, that is a new chapter in life for us. Me and Christy start again from scratch. So we are so excited, so passionate about it. Please pray. We um, uh, West End already, the elders make two, two accounts. One is for the supplies the ministry need, another one is for the uh, family minister. So that's the way it's gonna be working, advertising, newspaper, radio station, you know, they have a radio, which means they invite me to speak on Saturdays too. So, ongoing, please pray for us. We're gonna reach out people. Um, as the church grow, we're gonna incorporate in helping communities, inviting people to the local uh, churches, 
to learn Spanish or tutoring kids, helping in some ways because some of them, they deal a lot with homeworks and stuff like that. It is really good how people get in touch. And believe me, they love this. And the church is always is willing to help community, to have a better communities. So, um, obstacles. Of course, Jesus has obstacles. And we're going to have those too. We're going to be pioneers, which means we all uh, understand that there's two strong congregations that they support so 100% and they're the Catholics. And we have Pentecostals too in the same area, but um, we're hoping with this location, it's going to be easiest location for the work. And we're going to start from scratch. Communication is my point. I came from a church that they support me, just one congregation, the local congregation. But it's, it's my challenge here is how I can keep every congregation, you know, in communication. My goal with my wife is we're going to send emails every week, every week, uh, about what we're doing. And if we, somebody put something in the bulletin, we'll be reaching out all the community of members, knowing what's going on in the spending ministry, emails to the elders, anything. So that is my goal, and we, um, that's uh, our goal. So benefits. Well, we are pioneers. We are learning at the same time. Since we all together, we're going to have one area wide Hispanic church. So we're helping give back to our community, restoring families, families teaching basic skills as they need it. We personally is going to grow as a Christian in faith. So I heard many things that people have members already in Spanish say, I'm going to visit you one day. I said, please come. I would love to have you there. And that's amazing how everything works. So personally, we're going to uh, work in that area. And uh, thinking about how we can reach out souls, there's many ways in the Bible to reach out souls. And uh, if you go with me in the book of John, again, but this time in the, in the verse 39, it is amazing how this lady reacts when Jesus says, the time is now. The time is now. We're going to be worshiping God. And this lady came to the city. One person went to the whole city. He says in the verse 39, it says, As many the Samaritans of that city believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. You see how powerful it is when you yourself are willing to help others, to reach out to them and bring them to Christ. She just says, I know someone who know me and is changing my life. That is Jesus. And the whole city, some of the city came to Jesus and begged Jesus to stay two days. And Jesus said, I'm going to stay two days. What amazed me of this is before Jesus, after Jesus resurrects, you know, and his, uh, after Jesus, before Jesus was arise to heaven, in the book of Acts, if you're willing to go with me, please, in the Bible, let's go book of Acts, uh, chapter 1. Jesus says of a phrase there that is really um, important. That it says, in the verse 8, says, but you shall receive the power and the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria. You see how Jesus keep his disciple connecting them and says, I start this. Please don't forget this. Keep faith. Have patience for 
I already start over this work and you just please don't forget to reach out Samaria. Jesus was clear to his disciples. And we all understand that he's clear with us there. That we need to reach out not only Spanish speaking people. As soon as possible we leave this temple, we can see many people driving cars, going to school with you, going to job. There's a lot of people around you that they may probably pray and say, please Lord, uh, I need someone to tell me about what I can do with my marriage, what I'm gonna do with my kids, what I'm gonna do with my life. And you are beside that person we need to share, we need to talk and touch the heart. The passage that my brother was reading it in front of you, it says the fruit that Jesus did when he planted. Jesus was the first one come into that area, but one servant, Philip, went to Samaria and preached. And he says in the verse 8, uh, chapter 8, Act chapter 8, uh, verse 12 says, but when they believed Philip, as he preached, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the same name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Do you see it there? What we just need to do? What we just need to do, church? We just need to talk. We just need to reach out, people. We just need to be example. We just need to be in touch with those people. And they were baptized. And then the apostles noticed that Samaria was believing in God. So they sent the apostles in the verse 14, said, Now when the apostles who were at the Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them. Samaria? Can't believe it. That place? Yes. There's many places everywhere you go that if you invite people to church, you never know. God has been working through already. It is amazing how God put everything in place. I have been praying since I came here, and Arnold was one of the congregation that I visited, and then we left to Memphis, and everything I've been working through. Over home, sold in one day. And uh, we came that week, and now we have a home for uh, my kids, and uh, we uh, have a pending contract. They are set to close in May, which is something that is really, sometimes it's not, you know, normally that happened, but we have been saying, God, please help us, and, and uh, let us know that this is, is your will. And you know what? Everything is just in place. And uh, I'm going to have a, a place that I can have my family and me and Christy and my wife and my kids are going to be reaching out the souls, but I will have a place to rest with my family because of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. When I open the Bible, when I preach, you are in that preach. When I'm knocking the door, you are in that door because of you because your prayers, because your support, because your love and your great heart. How amazing it is to share the gospel of God. If you're tonight, if you're here, and Jesus has been knocking your door many times, how long will it take you to give your soul to Jesus? There is only a one and two steps to do it. Jesus says in Mark 16, 16 says, do you believe me? Be baptized. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? 
Do you think that this woman was there for, for casualty? No. Do you think that you're here for casualty? No. We all are here as a members. We all here for a purpose of God. Because everybody, everyone here has a plan. And you're perfect. We know we make mistakes. But if you have been failing in your discipleship, God will bring you. And we just come here and we're going to pray for you as we sing and we stand during this song.